Luke chapter 9. We're just going to read four verses. Starting in verse 57, we'll read to the end of the chapter. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. There are a lot of people in this world that say they're Christians. There are a lot of people who say they're Christians that also believe that they are. And yet they don't understand what a Christian is. Does everybody here understand what a Christian is? A Christian is a disciple of Jesus Christ. Right? That's what the Bible says. In Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. Christians are disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, what's a disciple? A disciple is somebody that's devoted to a teacher, right? Someone who follows closely along with their master. Many people have it in their minds that to be a Christian, to experience eternal life, all one must do is offer God a prayer of repentance. I've heard this, I don't know how many times. Hey, so-and-so, are you a Christian? Oh, yes, I prayed the prayer when I was seven years old. Think about who we have been worshiping this morning. God the Father sent His Son into this world as a human baby. Jesus lived 30 years in this world, faced the same sufferings, temptations, and everything that the rest of us did. And then He chose knowingly to go to the cross and die a painful, torturous death in our place so that we wouldn't have to suffer like that for eternity. And then as the creed says, he descended into hell. On the cross, what did Jesus cry out? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There was a separation at that point between the Father and the Son because Jesus Christ bore our sins all the way to hell for us. The creator of the universe did this for us. It was a serious thing. And yet, multitudes of people think that it's so ordinary, it's so not a big deal, that they have themselves convinced, or someone has convinced them that all they have to do is pray a short prayer and they'll be fine. That's not how it works, is it? Sadly, they view God's salvation plan as nothing more than a life insurance policy that requires a single payment. 
doesn't work that way. At least not according to Jesus himself. Based on his own words, it's clear that being a Christian requires more than a single, simple prayer. I'll just Let's read some of those verses, that, some of those things that Jesus said. First from Matthew 7. Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. A little bit farther up down, this is also in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Again, in Matthew, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. And then in John, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you think that a simple prayer is going to give you eternal fire insurance, you're sadly mistaken. <coughs> we must follow Him. We can't just pray a prayer and go on with an unchanged life and expect that God is pleased with us. Again, Jesus said in John, If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So clearly, being a Christian is not as simple or as easy as many people think. There are others who have come to this point and realized this, this is true. It's not as easy as many people think. And they have decided not to be a Christian. That's a sad thing. Jesus' call to follow Him requires a serious commitment. And somehow I don't have... There it is. No. The next line there is Jesus calls... Jesus' call to follow Him requires a serious commitment. We can't just flippantly go, oh yeah, I prayed a prayer and I'm good. And expect that we're good. Because we won't be. So, how do we take, how do we take Jesus' call to follow Him seriously? What do we got to do? What is the serious approach to what Christ has done? Well, in our passage today, Jesus calls us, gives us three answers to that question. How do we take His call to follow Him seriously? First, we need to count the cost. He told the, well, as He was following along, it says in verse 7, 57, as they were going down the road, someone said to Him, I will follow you wherever you go. Probably said it all wound up and excited in the, Emotion of the, of, the, of the moment. Oh yeah, this is great. I'm going to follow you, Jesus. And what did Jesus say? Hey, the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But I've got nothing. 
If you're going to follow me, don't expect that you're going to have any more than I'm going to have. Count the cost. Don't just flippantly or emotionally say, oh yeah, I'm going to be a Christian. Count the cost because there is a cost. A huge cost. Jesus in response to the guy saying, I will follow you wherever you go, Lord, Jesus said, unless you are ready to give up everything, you will not follow me. Not a matter of you cannot follow me. It's not a matter of permission, but it's a matter of ability. If you are not willing to give up everything, you will not follow me. It's a simple fact. Count the cost. Jesus went on in another, at another time in his ministry and said this, Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. In other words, it's not able to. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost? Whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is a great way off, he sends a delegation and ask them for terms of peace. So therefore, anyone who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. This is what Jesus said. This is not what I'm saying. This is what Jesus himself said. If we are not willing to give up everything to follow him, we cannot be his disciples. That's what he said. So the first thing we must do to take God's call to follow Jesus seriously is to count the cost. The second thing we must do, Jesus said, is follow now. We must follow Jesus now, not later. In verse 59, another person said to him, or he said to this person, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go bury my father. In other words, Lord, I've got obligations. I've got obligations that I have to keep. I can't follow you now, but I will follow you later. And Jesus said, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go. And proclaim the kingdom of God. In other words, look, if you're going to be my disciple, there can't be anything more important than being my disciple. There can't be anything more important in your life than me. Jesus told this guy, look, if you will not follow me now, neither will you follow me later. What's the proverb? Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Putting things off means generally it will never happen. And that whole principle is very true. It's what Jesus said here too. If you won't follow me now, you won't follow me later. In order to take his call to follow him seriously, we must count the cost and we must be willing to follow him now. And leave all of those other priorities that we have for Him to take care of. For Him to show us how to take care of. Jesus put it very strongly in another, at another time when He said, Whoever loves me and does not... Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
He may have an obligation to your father. He may be dying, and you need to bury him. But Jesus says, even in that case, you need to follow me. If you want eternal life, if you want what I have to offer, you have to follow me first and foremost. He said it even more strongly. Here, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Your loyalty and love for me, Jesus said, has to be greater, so much greater than your love for anybody else that by comparison your love for them looks like hate. You must love me more than anyone or anything. And you, because of that, you need to follow me now. So to take Jesus seriously when he calls us to follow him, we must count the cost, we must commit to follow him now, and we must not look back. The third person that Jesus talked to, in verse 61, it says, Yet another one said, I will follow you, Lord. But then he said, First let me say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. It's a pretty serious statement too, isn't it? Don't look back, Jesus says. To the person that said, let me first say well to those at home, Jesus says, look, if you linger in the past, you will not follow me. If you hold on to the things in your past, you will not follow me. They will keep you from following me. God's all about the future. He sent His Son to prepare us for the future. He sent His Son to make it possible for us to accept the future or to be ready for the future. And He is coming back to fulfill all His promises, to establish peace on this earth. He is looking forward. He wants us to look forward. And if we are constantly looking at the past and holding on to it, we cannot follow Him. It's just not possible. We need to be like Paul, who said this, Brothers, I must have missed that one. I'll read it to you. It's in Philippians chapter 3. Paul said this, Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if any one of you thinks otherwise, God will reveal that to you also. We cannot look back and expect to be able to follow Jesus. So how can we sum this up? We can sum it up by saying this, unless you take Jesus' call to follow Him seriously, you will not be His disciple. And if, it's, it's as simple as that. If you think that you can just Pray of prayer, just go on, live your life, that you're okay, you're not okay. God calls us to seriously follow Him. Unless you take His call to follow Him seriously, you will not be His disciple. It's not possible. And if you are not His disciple, you don't have eternal life. That's what God's Word says.
So that leaves us each with questions to ask. First of all, have you taken Jesus seriously? If not, will you? Will you take Jesus' call to follow Him seriously? Will you make a serious decision to follow Jesus? A serious decision is not just a prayer. A serious decision involves four things. First is that serious prayer of repentance. Repentance means turning away from that which is destroying you. Not just to flippantly say, Lord, please forgive me and go on doing what you've been doing. It doesn't work that way. Pray a serious prayer of repentance, which means admit to God that you've not taken your salvation seriously and beg His forgiveness. That's the first thing that we each must do to take Jesus' call to follow Him seriously. The second thing that we must do is to tell Jesus that we're willing to pay whatever price necessary to follow Him. That's what it means. To follow Him means we will follow Him wherever He leads, even if it means giving up everything. And then tell Jesus that you're ready to follow Him right now. There is nothing in this world more important to you. There is nothing more important in this world to any of us than Jesus Christ. This world is passing away. God lives forever. And if we want to live forever, we must follow Him now and not let anything get in the way of us doing just that. So tell Jesus you're ready to follow Him right now. And finally, ask Jesus to enable you to let go of the past and give you the power to stay focused on Him. Always remember what Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, in the life. And no one comes to God the Father except by me. And I have just told you how you come to the Father by me. I've called you to follow me. Count the cost. Do it now and don't look back. That's what it means to follow Jesus Christ. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank You that Your Word's clear. Lord, we understand that it's not going to be easy. But we know what the reward is at the end. And now. Lord, we thank You that as Your disciples, You never leave us, nor forsake us. As Your disciples... You give us everything we need to follow You. And Lord, we thank You for the promise of what's coming for us who follow You. Lord, we don't want to be the, one of those who does not take Your Word seriously, who just shrugs our shoulders at what You did by coming to earth. Lord, we are Your disciples. We are Christians. We follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if you want to follow Jesus seriously, there are some things that serious followers of Jesus do. We study His Word. We talk with Him daily. We do what He says. We spend time with His people. Those are things that as a follower of Jesus Christ we must do. If you're not doing that, I strongly encourage you to because if you don't, the truth is that eventually you will not be following Him. Because unless we stay connected to Him through studying His Word and talking with Him and doing what He says, eventually we will no longer be following Him. We must do what He's given us to do. 
And it also helps to spend time with his people. So if you want to follow Jesus, do those four things. At least, as a bare minimum, do those four things. And you will never have to worry that you won't that you are not following him. There's a very simple song that goes along with this message. I think whoever wrote it, wrote it based on this passage. But let's stand and sing this in closing. Uh, hopefully this is your commitment as well as mine to Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. Jesus